everybody happy new year january 1st 2021 uh here in missouri snowing right now the cold day to start the new year off in the office working on fish the moment lake map breakdowns we're getting ready to switch them over to winter here or spring here we've been doing the winter maps and doing some personal lake map breakdowns so busy on that all day long and just wanted to take a break and give you today's fishing tip on something i wanted to start the year off with uh, from a lot of interest i've been getting on jerk baits and uh, everybody knows that's followed me, you know, I've been heavily involved with the Mega Bass jerk baits for, for a long time. You know, I do the instructional uh, jerk bait trips, I do the on the water jerk bait lessons with Fish the Moment. Um, it's just one of my favorite techniques of all time. But I, I sort of wanted to share with you all the story about how the Mega Bass Vision 110 came into being because uh, it's arguably, you know, obviously the number one jerk bait in the United States and the world probably. Um, and the offshoots of that are also popular as well. So I wanted to share with you sort of how it came about. And, uh, you know, first of all, I've been on the Mega Bass Pro Staff for almost 30 years now. Um, I got on, uh, started in 1992 with them. And what happened is I was at the Bassmasters Classic in 1992. And back then, um, every night for the competitors, they'd have some type of a banquet, um, you know, like a really formal type banquet. And they, they seated you um, at different tables with people. You didn't really know who, who you were gonna be sitting next to. And it just so happened that uh, at one of those nights at the banquet, I was sat next to a, a gentleman named uh, Masaki Murayama. And Masaki, he was the, uh, I guess you'd call him the American liaison for Megabass over here in the United States. Masaki lived in the United States here. Um, and was good friends with Yuki Ito, who who's the owner of Mega Bass uh, in Japan. And back in 1992, uh, Mega Bass wasn't anything like it is right now. They were uh, they'd been around for a little bit. They were a small company, um, and at the time they only had um, just a handful of lures. They had one called a Baydex. They they had some really odd looking crankbaits. And Masaki, we got talking about it. And he was telling me that Megabass wanted to start making a push over here in the United States uh, to get into the United States market. And we just hit it off. And um, shortly after that, um, he invited me to become the first Megabass Pro Staff member in 1992. And the next year, you know, I, I flew over to Japan uh, uh, to some of the, to the uh, uh, Tokyo sports show over there and worked for Megabass at the sports show. Um, so that's sort of how my relationship with Megabass got started out. And then uh, in, this, in the ensuing years after that, they brought on, there was another angler named Danny Correa. Um, Danny, at the time, we were roommates together on the circuit. He was a professional angler too. He'd finished second in the Bassmasters Classic his rookie year in 1986. He qualified for a couple classics. And so Danny and I were brought on, uh, as the Danny was brought on to the pro staff a couple years after that. And then shortly after that in the uh, late 90s they brought on Aaron Martins so it was um, myself Aaron and uh, Danny for a long time up until after the 2000s but anyway what happened during the course of those periods you know I, I was working uh, closely with Masaki you know I was keeping in contact with him all the time uh, you know we were just bouncing ideas off of everybody I'd been to Japan two or three times over at the sports shows and uh, you know Mega Bass was growing rapidly. You know, they started producing rods. They started you know, producing different type of baits. You know, they, uh, different bait categories. And I was on Masaki a long time to get Mega Bass to produce a jerk bait, a really good jerk bait, because I knew with the uh, resources that they had and the uh, the the engineering capabilities that they had, they could build the best jerk bait in the world. And at the time, like I said, I was. I was a big time jerkbait fisherman back then, and at the time I had a lot of uh, a lot of my own modified jerkbaits that were available at the time. And at the time, those were most of them were medium build rogues, some bomber long a uh, bomber long a's jerkbaits, um, and some rebel spoonbill minnows still at the time. But the 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 really uh, key bait during that time frame in the mid '90s was the uh, the Smithwick Rogue in the uh, uh, both the regular size and the and the uh, the the Magnum size 
And I had tons of these rogues. I had, but I had about a dozen of them that I that were perfect. They ran perfect out of the box. Um, I had them painted. I'd had them modified. I drilled weights in them to suspend them perfect. I had some that would suspend. I had some that would sink. Um, I had everything tweaked out on them perfectly. Um, these were just exactly what I was wanting in a jerk bait. So I had a lot of discussions with Masaki and I put together uh, about a dozen of my uh, prime jerk baits, my robes, um, and shipped them to Masaki and Masaki shipped them over to Yuki Ito in Japan. And I lined out or laid out a bunch of criteria about what I really felt we needed in a jerk bait to, to, to design like the ultimate, you know, suspending jerk bait. So this process took a long time. Um, Yuki took the baits, you know, took the information that I gave him and he began working on the Vision 110. And a couple years later, he came out with the initial, uh, you know, Mega Bass Vision 110 from those baits that I'd send him. So what he had done is he had taken that information and he'd taken some of the specs off the rogues and he had modified it and basically created his own version of what he felt, you know, the perfect mega bass uh, jerk bait would be. And actually I have one of this, this right here is my original mega bass vision 110. This is like a circa 1998 model. I'm going to guess right, right here, you know, still has got the straight eye on it like that, but this is the one right here. Actually, this is the first one I used in competition. Um, I fished a, almost won an FLW tournament on Lake Champlain on this bait. Um, I led it going into the last day on the Vision 110 on this exact bait right here. And uh, the uh, I'd had quite a bit of wind the first three days of the tournament, which allowed me to lead the tournament on it. And the last day it slicked over completely and um, and I wound up finishing second or third in that tournament. But Anyway, so that was the, uh, the the birth of it, and what had happened after that is um, is you know there was a lot of offshoots modifications off of that. They went into the Mega Bass One Ten Plus One, the One Ten Plus Two, the One Ten Magnum, a bigger profile, the X eighty Trick Darter, and now they've got such a wide variety of profiles and actions uh, that it's just. Uh, got something for everybody as far as every situation that you have. But anyway, basically what Yuki did is he took the, uh, you know, everything that I was wanting in the jerk bait and he made it a hundred times better. The Smithwick Rogue has got very inexpensive components on it. I don't want to say cheap, but they're just inexpensive. The, the tolerances are real slack on it. Um, the quality control is really inconsistent. The split rings, you know, just the, just every component of the bait was not high quality. And what Yuki did is he took all that, the, the generic information I provided him, and he created the, the highest quality bait that you could produce with the highest quality components. And that's why the Mega Bass Vision 110 is uh, is pretty pricey. It's, it's, it's not because, you know, they can get away with that for no reason, but it's because of the components involved in the creation of this bait are simply a lot more expensive than any other jerk bait that had came along before that. But anyway, that's a little bit about the story of the Vision 110. Um, like I said, it's become the go-to of, of all pros in the country. I mean, there's not a pro out there, I don't care who they're sponsored by, that does not use Vision 110s. I mean, they all do to some extent. Um, it's just the number one fish catching jerk bait of all time. And probably will continue, will continue to be so, you know, simply because the innovation behind Mega Bass and, and Yuki Ito and everyone uh, uh, involved with it. But like I said, I'm really fortunate to still be part of, of Mega Bass. Um, uh, you know, Masaki passed away several years ago, and uh, Mega Bass, the American side of it, Mega Bass America, was taken over by his son, Yusuke Murayama, who has done a phenomenal job at growing the company. Um, dad would be super proud of what he's done with the company. I'm still, you know, really honored and fortunate to be part of the, the company as well. So anyway, that's the story of Mega Bass Vision 110. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys are starting out the year right. Um, like I said, thank you so much, everybody, for subscribing and following me and liking my videos over the past year. Um, I invite you to stay with me this year. I plan on putting out a ton more videos. I'm going to be doing lots of different tournaments this year. 
in addition to the Bassmaster Opens, I'm going to be fishing a lot of the regional circuits. Johnny Schultz and I are going to fish some team tournaments together. Um, we're going to be filming all that stuff for Fish the Moment. It's going to be a lot of good info out there. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good new year, and we'll talk later. See you.